welcome to Knitography. I'm Patricia and this video vlog is all about my experience of knitting the rusty cardigan. I know that many of you are in the middle of knitting your cardigan and some of you are deciding that you would like to knit the cardigan and might need a little bit of extra support or encouragement. So in this video, I'm just going to tell you from start to finish some of the techniques and tips that I used to create this beautiful uh, piece out of some very special Icelandic wool. So first of all, I'd like to, to say that um, I am not an expert in these techniques. Uh, these are the techniques that I researched and that I have learned and that I have used uh, during my knitting, but also within this cardigan, I learned some new techniques and some new tips that I'll also be sharing. So if you um, uh, find that I have done something or could do something better, I do hope that you'll reach out and share that with me so that I could learn it, learn that technique for my next cardigan. I'd also like to thank Claire from the Wooly Thistle for sponsoring this video uh, by offering a giveaway. And during the video, I'll be sharing with you a secret prompt that you can go and participate uh, in to win the giveaway. So stay tuned for that. This morning, I'm sitting outside on our little summer veranda. Um, as you walk out the back of my home, there's a uh, little veranda that is uh, uh, has my honeysuckle vine which is a, a plant that is very dear to me uh, and makes me feel like my home growing up and right now it's brown and uh, c but is coming alive so uh, I really enjoy sitting in this spot and thought today that uh, it's a beautiful morning the creek is flowing from the from the thaw and the birds are singing so hopefully this will be an enjoyable and informative video for you. You can find the Rusty Cardigan pattern on Ravelry. Uh, it is a very simplified pattern but it is a free pattern and um, I have printed it out and thought that it might be really good to just go through the pattern uh, as if I was knitting it to share the tips and techniques that I added to the pattern. It's a one page pattern as I say and I'll give you a few tips about it. So when I decided to knit uh, this cardigan of course as with any uh, cardigan or knit the first thing is that you're probably going to be deciding the kind of yarn that you want to use. And I really was drawn to this pattern because of the uh, Plutolope that it is knit in. Plutolope is a very special kind of Icelandic wool. It is unspun. It is a single, I guess you would say a single ply, uh, uh, unspun yarn. And that means that it is very fragile, it's very delicate. And in previous vlogs, I've kind of shared the history uh, up from some of my research. So if you're interested in that, you can go back and um, listen to some of the historical information about it. But I definitely wanted to, um, I definitely wanted the experience of knitting it, uh, Plutolope. And Pluto just means plate. It comes in these sort of plates where it's just been wound around. And these were my uh, color choices. This is actually what I had left uh, from the uh, project. So it's quite generous in its yardage. Now, as I said, Plutolope is very fragile. And I have a little sample here just to show you uh, possibly up close. You see that um, it is thick and thin in some, especially when you're knitting with it. But it can, it just breaks so ever so uh, easily. So my recommendation right off is this, if you're going to choose the Plutolope, you're going to want to make sure that you are not wanting to finish this cardigan quickly. You're going to know that it's going to take some time and some patience and it's going to be a uh, a project that you don't want to do when you're very stressed or harried and yeah, that you 
one of the things I really learned during the project is just to be patient and to take uh, a time with the project because it creates the most beautiful fabric and also it is just it is just so soft you you feel the toothiness you feel uh, that this is raw pure wool but when it is knit up the fabric is so drapey and so soft uh, it, and also retains that rustic feel and I actually did not condition uh, this uh, cardigan as I did when I knit, knit my school uh jumper in Let Lopi. So the other alternative then is of course Let Lopi. And Let Lopi is actually two strands of Plutolopi in which they have uh, put some twist into. So deciding uh, the yarn that you're going to knit. Uh, and I hope that you will uh, be adventurous and use the Plutolopi. We have one source of Plutolopi here in Norway. So if you are local to me and you're watching this, please contact me and I will share a really uh, very nice uh, resource uh, to get the Plutolopi that comes quite quickly. Um, yeah. So, I decided to use the Plutolopi. There's been a lot of talk about, when I'm just looking at the pattern, of course, you're deciding the size. Let me go back and speak about the size. I want to say that in my opinion, there is not any ease built into this uh, uh, cardigan. So, um, I chose my size, and it is a very fitted cardigan, and I knit very much to gauge, so I didn't have a gauge issue. So if you are, um, yeah, pretty, you're getting gauge uh, with your swatch, or I'm going to tell you how I got my swatch in a minute, but um, I would suggest if you want a looser fitting cardigan that you go up a size. It's not going to make such a big difference. I mean, I if I wanted to go back and have a more cozy cardigan, I would have definitely gone up a size. But in this case, for me, my size is well fitted in the arms and in the in the bodice, uh, and and fit quite uh, uh, sits quite nicely on the hip. There's not a lot of um, yeah ease built into it. And then we talked about the materials and you'll get your needles. And the next thing is the gauge. And within the pattern, they, they recommend that you start knitting with the body. But I would suggest that you start knitting with the sleeves because that's how I decided to get my gauge swatch and usually do in all of my patterns. I start with the, um, with the sleeves and then I use that as my gauge swatch. So I would suggest that you start with your sleeve uh, and, and go against uh, the pattern, modify the pattern in doing that. Now, in casting on the sleeves, you're going to look at your size then. And um, I used with Plutolopi the double pointed needles to cast on as it's recommended in the pattern. When you're casting on with the rusty cardigan, just decide a very quiet and uh, yeah, non-stress time that you have to really sit down. You're not distracted in any way and you're just going to cast on. If you're using the Plutolopi, just cast on gently, stitch by stitch by stitch. Now, when you've finished casting on both of the sleeves, you're going to have lots of experience about the feel of casting on and you're not going to be as worried. You're going to really find out that that casting on there's quite a lot of strength in the yarn and yeah the experience of casting on the sleeves is going to give you the confidence to cast on the body. So just make sure that it's a stress-free non-distracted time and and just say today I'm going to cast on and then I'm going to give you a tip for how to move forward. So you're going to cast on your sleeve. We're going to, I'm going to assume that you modify the cat pattern and you're going to cast on the sleeve. And then it's going to say to go to the edging pattern. And this is a free pattern, so I'm not 
uh, being disrespectful to the uh, designer that shared it with us. Um, but you're going to go to the edging pattern. And in the edging pattern, it says uh, to uh, knit one and then purl one. And then you're going to knit a row. Well, I would like you to, instead of beginning that edging pattern right away, I want you to make a foundation row for the edging. That's one of the most important tips that I can give you. Once, a, once you cast on, especially the first time when you're a little insecure with the Plutolope, I just went right back and I knit a full row to secure the cast on. You cannot tell it at all in the edging, and it just sets you up for beginning that knit one, purl one. And the reason I share this with you is because when you knit one and you purl one, there's more tension in that edging. And so you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna have to be quite careful. You're gonna have to be quite careful uh, in that first edging round. So cast on, knit yourself a foundation row, and then begin your knit one, purl one. And as I say, you cannot tell it, and then you've got more strength in your cast on to do that edging. So you knit one, purl one, and then in the edging, you knit a row, and then you knit one, purl one. And I'm certain, I am just certain that she chose this edging because of the fragility of this uh, yarn. And then you just go up knitting your sleeves, uh, following the pattern. Um, I actually modified and just tried it on. And I, um, I, when I first tried it on, I found the cuff to be quite loose here. And yet the sleeve is quite fitted. So I was very careful with my sleeves and I just kept trying them on. And then this is the wider part of my arm. So I increased uh, a couple of times here and then um, I didn't. And then up here, um, I, incre I did most of my increases to get up to the uh, right amount of stitches. You're going to see that it tells you every seven rows and so many times. And I just made sure that when I got up to the top of the sleeve, I met the required amount of stitches. So then once you've done this sleeve, you're going to do this sleeve and you're going to cast on in the same way. And then it's going to be the body piece. And the same thing for the body piece. I just sat myself down. I made sure that I wasn't distracted or I had anything stressful going on. And I cast on the body. And I also did a foundation row before I uh, began the edging piece, which was knit one, purl one. Now, the other tip that I want to give, uh, give you about the body, and I'm just going to, sorry, I'm just going to turn the camera a little bit is about the sticking stitches. Now in the pattern, she tells you uh, to uh, cast on two sticking stitches. Um, I have learned here in Norway to always cast on five. Now you can go to YouTube and put in a, uh, a sticking, the word sticking, and you're gonna find videos of experts that tell you to steak in pattern, They're, you know, like a one color, one color, one color, repeated pattern. You're gonna find two stitches. You're gonna find, um, yeah, you'll find a lot of knowledge on steaking. Not to mention Kate Davis and in Norwegian, you're gonna find uh, designers that share that information. But personally here in Norway, I have been taught to do five stitches. This was especially uh, effective when using the Plutolope because um, when you have your five stitches, you have two stitches on either side, and then you're going to cut on that middle steak stitch. The other tip that you can, for me, I just cut right up. I didn't reinforce or anything. Um, those two stitches secure the steak, so you know there's not going to be any unraveling and you're going to cut right up that middle stitch. One of the great things about 
um, knitting five purl stitches within the body of your cardigan is on that third stitch you have that purl bump and when I started doing uh, steaking and I was a little bit insecure about steaking I took a in this case I would have used a red yarn or a bright yellow yarn and I just thread it through my tapestry uh, needle and I just went up that third stitch purl bump in a straight line I just drew a line with my tapestry needle I don't really have to do that anymore but I would recommend that you do that so that you can see that purl bump all the way up for cutting so I highly recommend that rather than using the two stitches that she recommends within the pattern that you use a five stitch cast on it works perfectly we'll talk about the sleeves and then you just knit the body you've got your body and you come around and you purl the five stitches and you've got your body and you get all the way up to the color work now you're going to be putting your sleeves on uh, uh, once you've gotten up just before the uh, color work I think it is yeah after you do the sleeves you're going to put 10 stitches on a stitch holder and you're going to you're going to put uh, the underarm stitches on a stitch holder and you're going to put you're going to put five stitches uh, ten stitches on the sleeve uh, where those will be grafted together later and I'll talk about that and you're just going to put those on hold ten on the body here ten on the sleeve and I used uh, I didn't use yarn but I used my um, uh, stitch holder tool that I shared in another vlog that my mom sent me but in this case I would have definitely used dental floss I would have used dental floss to put these stitches on hold or I would have used a silk yarn something very smooth and slippery uh, to put them on hold because of the toothiness of this yarn okay you've got your stitches on hold You've got them on hold on your sleeves and you're ready to put them all together onto the long needle, the, or, you know, a long needle uh, to knit in the round. Now, one of the things is when I first got my stitches, my, you know, you've got your body and then you're going to knit on the top of your slitch, stitches. You're going to go around the back. You're going to knit over this and you're going to knit here. And I started here again. So if you haven't ever put sleeves onto a cardigan, I'm just going to, I'm going to say that again, a little bit slower. You're going to knit around to the, to this point, And it tells you in the pattern and those to that 10 stitches, you're going to knit over the sleeve, knit around the back, knit over the sleeve, knit here and you're back to your steak stitches and then everything is joined on one needle now in the pattern she tells you to go right to the color work again I would suggest to you to modify the pattern and to knit yourself a foundation row not only one but I knit three foundation rows before I started the color work I wanted to really you're gonna feel really insecure when you put those uh, sleeves on because this is gonna look really messy in this Plutolope I found out at least and I'm a gauge knitter and you see my fabric was quite smooth but when I put it on there were big holes and you know I felt really insecure and every time I feel insecure in my joining I always knit myself a foundation row and I knit that one row and I thought you know what I'm gonna knit another one so I knit myself another foundation row and actually another one and then everything just looked really nice and smooth and then I began the color work so I began the color work and that was that was really wonderful I want to say I did not bring it with me but I want to say that when you get to this color work I took my pattern uh, 
to my copier at school and I blew this up quite big and I use sticky notes. I use three sticky notes across it and I uh, knit the color work. I use that as a guide. I'm turning it around because I want to share something very uh, uh, special with you after. Now, you see, you cannot tell about the three foundation rows. There's nothing to see about that. But I, it says to go right into knitting the color work, and I would suggest that you blow this up, especially if you're new to charts. Now, I just uh, move my uh, sticky notes along. There are, let's see, how many rows? There are 34 stitches, and there are 20, yeah, 23 rows of knitting. Okay. The only thing I'm going to say about the chart, and I'm going to tell you just out front that I'm not sure if this is right, but this is what I found. Now, in the chart, you get to row, I, I have to look in my glasses, I'm sorry, excuse me. You get to row 19, and then you get these sort of slash lines. There is no legend for this chart. It just says something like it's a knit together. I, I'm not sure. I knit them together. But what I found was, was on the row that they drew the line, that was not the row that you wanted to knit two together. In other words, to me, it seemed like in row 19, you go across the pattern and then there's this slash line. It seemed like to me she was preparing you that that's the stitch you're taking away. I don't know what other people's experience was. There's no legend and, and of course this is a one page pattern so it assumes that you have some knowledge. So on row 19 as I began it didn't work out and I thought wait a minute this isn't right. So I went back and I just did row 19 within the color work pattern as it stood. And then in row 20, where you get these sort of gray lines, that worked out that I should do the knit two together. So that's just a tip. I don't know if it's correct, but it worked for me. And that was exactly how, yeah, how this uh, motif should have been knit. So on the row where you see the dash, for me, it did not work out. I just took that as her saying, this is the stitch you're going to get rid of. I was just very careful when I did it that I made sure that I did the knit two together in the place that she had it. So in other words, I went along, I did the pattern, and I made sure right there in those spots that she suggested that I did the knit twos together. I just made sure that it was in the area that she suggested. And in doing so, my motif worked out beautifully. I had no problems. That was the only time that I wondered within the motif. Okay, so I knit the motif. Here's another area where I modified the pattern. I noticed in looking on Ravelry that this cardigan sits, in a way it's a boat neck, in a way, it's a boat neck collar. I'm not sure if that's what it's called. I'm not a very, you know, I'm not very knowledgeable with fashion, but to me it seemed like a very uh, boat necky kind of untraditional collar. and. I did not want that to sit low on my back. I'm a short person, and I, for some of the people, I feel that it draw, drew your eyes uh, to this area of the back and, and, and made it look kind of humped, and I really didn't want that. So what I, what I did was when you look at the motif, and I hope you're able to see this, when I looked at the motif, I saw... Here is the center of the motif. I'm going to just turn the camera up a bit so you can see. Here is the center of the motif. And then you go to here. And here is the center of the motif on the left shoulder. And here is the center of the motif on the right shoulder. And then within the motif, you have this little edging here. 
you have the middle of the motif and then you have this edging. So I went to the right shoulder motif from the middle and I went to that very last white stitch of the motif and I put a stitch marker. Then I went to the shoulder or the motif on the left side of the shoulder in the middle of the motif and I found that one stitch on the uh, left side of the motif and I put a stitch marker. Now, once I finish the color work, you know, I'm in the front here at my stick, I knit around to the that stitch marker. So remember you're at the front and I, I knit to that. And then I wrapped and turned and if you don't know how to wrap and turn, you can find a YouTube video that will support you with that. But basically what you do is you take the yarn right where you are to the back, slip a stitch over to the needle, bring that yarn, wait a minute, okay, yeah, bring that yarn back again and slip the yarn back. It's a motion of slipping and moving yarn, and then you turn your work so you're ready to purl. Then I purled all the, be sure to check that out on YouTube because I'm not an auditory person. I must see it or do it, so if you're not auditory, it's really important that you check that out. Very Pink Knits is who I always go to. She's a knitter from uh, where I come from in Austin, Texas, and she, yeah, she's my go-to for uh, needing support with techniques. So anyway, I purled all the way to that um, stitch marker. I did a wrap and turn there. I simply put the yarn in the other direction, slipped a stitch, moved the yarn, put the yarn stitch back on the needle, and then I knit back five stitches before the wrap. With a wrap and turn, you, my experience in most pa patterns is that it's stop five stitches before. And so that's what I did. It's not written into the rusty cardigan, but that's what I did. I stopped five stitches, did a wrap and turn, went back, stopped five stitches, did a wrap and turn, went back, stopped five stitches, and so on. I think I did it three times, three times. But I would have done it, I should have done it five times. I could have had even more depth to the neckline. If I did it again, I would do it five to seven times. Remember, it's not going to matter at all in the finishing. You just need to decide what you, what you want, uh, you know, how far you want it to come up on your back. This has nothing to do with the front. These are short rows that raise the neckline. So I'm very pleased with the way that it sits on me, but if I'd have done two more rows, it would have been even higher on my shoulders. And I noticed, and you can see on Instagram, when the, uh, my son photographed the back of the motif, I saw that even with my collared shirt, I could have had two more rows, and I wish I'd done that. So, I raised it up, uh, and, and then uh, when I was finished wrapping and turn, I did, I knit around, and I picked up those wrap stitches. And basically, when you're picking up wrap stitches, you're going to see that the, the, the stitch is kind of choked. You're going to see a stitch choking that stitch. You simply raise that stitch up onto the needle and knit those two together. That's, that's basically how to pick up wraps and turns. But again, go to YouTube, put in wraps and turns, and that's if you haven't used that technique, that technique has really changed all of my necklines. I just didn't understand how it worked. And people uh, in patterns, they don't really explain it. They just put wrap and turn. They don't write it out. So you've got to, you, they assume that you have that knowledge uh, prior to the knitting. And that that's the way it is with knitting patterns. You know, you have to be invested in, in uh, learning and, and how wonderful it is that we can share with each other and go to YouTube and find it out. 
So after you do the the it, uh, the modifying the neckline, it's also the same edging um, around the top. You know you're going to do that edging for approximately three centimeters so that it matches the cuff. Now once I was done, I blocked the whole sweater, and I used eucalyn, a lavender. Uh, very environmentally friend friendly, no rinse um, wool wash, and I prefer that. I prefer eucalyn because it is environmentally friendly. You don't have to wash it out of your uh, garment, which tells you that you know it's um, a good choice for the environment. And that's one of the things that I get from Sweden. I haven't found a source here in Norway, but I do pay toll on that because I think it's so important. Um, uh, to use a product that is uh, environmentally friendly. Now, once I blocked it out, it was time to um, uh, do the crochet edging up the sides. Now, in the middle, you've got your uh, your five stitches for your stick, and then you've got this uh, where it connects to the cardigan. Now, my connection to my stick was a bit loose and so I went to YouTube again because I am not a crocheter and I learned how to single crochet again I've done it before but I reminded myself how to do it and so at the very bottom of where your um, steak is you're going to just find where you cast on, the area where you cast on. You're going to take your crochet hook that is, and I used a cro crochet size that was one, um, yeah, just a bit smaller than the four millimeter needle that I used to knit the body. And I went in with the crochet hook and I brought it through and I made a loop. And then I just single crocheted right up the edging. A single crochet, I use the American single crochet. I do not remember what it's called in UK terms, but be aware that they are different terms and uh, for the same stitch. So I single crocheted up the edging, and I really like the effect. It finished off the motif. I don't know if it's perfect because I'm not a crocheter, but, but this yarn is quite dark, and I single crocheted up this edging. And then when uh, when uh, it was time to cut, so again, I had my five stitches, and you've got that pearl bump up the middle. If this is your first time, get yourself some dental floss or a red silk yarn, and you go right up, draw yourself a line with that yarn or that dental floss, and that's the area that you're going to cut. Um, I don't have to do that anymore because I've done it so many times that I really trust the yarn. I know it's not going to unravel. This yarn is toothy. It's pure wool. And when you choose those things, just trust it. Um, I have to say that I, I have done this with many Norwegian friends and they do not reinforce their steaks. I've never seen that. So... Um, I know that people do that with the sewing machine and I think I think in the in the pattern it actually says uh yeah sew in a machine you know you're going to sew it in straight and tight yeah I didn't do that I don't think that's necessary just trust that you're going to cut right up that stitch you've already reinforced your edging with the crochet so that's really enough I think I cut it open and um, I cut I cut the cardigan open I'm just gonna show you the raw edge inside it was a very you can't see it now because I've even I'm gonna tell you but I've even clipped it I've given it a haircut and here you see the raw edge nothing has come apart Here's the raw edge. It was very rough and very raw. I don't know that you can see that actually, but I have trimmed it down and I'm gonna tell you how I did that. Okay, I've cut it open. 
there's my raw edge and I've I've already given it given it a haircut but you can see on my video hopefully how uh, that that was quite thick and that was kind quite rough now what's brilliant about the crochet single crochet up the edge was that I merely sat down just like this now just pretend this isn't here I sat down just like this I folded that over now it was quite thick because I haven't given the haircut yet of the edging but I folded it over like this and I picked up the stitches all along the cardigan and in that crochet stitch you could see where to pick up so easily that's one of the reasons why I use that crochet edging when I steek. I go right up. I actually learned that from Kate Davis's blog, I think. So I, I crocheted right up and then I, I folded this over and I sat with the uh, right side facing me and I picked up those stitches all along the edge. Now, that is modifying the pattern. I did not crochet it. Let me look. I'm pretty sure that it says to do a crocheting edging and I want to say yes single crochet edging and you're gonna put buttonholes in there there was no way I could do that I don't I don't know how to crochet I don't know how to put a buttonhole into a crochet motif so uh, and one of my friends on Instagram she actually finished her cardigan um, at with me and she did the crochet edging and it is very beautiful so if you want to investigate that technique do so but my uh, my um, uh, edging matches my cuff I just did the same thing I picked up the uh, band I knit one foundation row and then I just knit one purl one and then I knit one knit one purl one and I did that now this is the button side on the left side so my edging exactly matches my cuff and I was pleased with that okay so I picked up the band I cast off and then after I was done with that okay I've picked it up and this would have still been rough what I did was I I laid this down there's no buttons on you'll have to imagine I laid this down and I got my iron and I steamed this button band down now remember the button band is not washed it's not washed at all so the rest of the cardigan is blocked so you've got your rough edge and you've got your button band and so I steamed this button band down and I steamed that edging and what happens is when you do that not only are you kind of blocking the button band but you are felting this edging it's a wonderful tip that I learned from a Norwegian friend so you have blocked the button band this is the left side where the buttons are and you have felted the area that you've cut which is reinforcing once again that this will not unravel now after I steamed it and I put it almost on mine says wool but then silk or yeah I put it I put it where it was even more gentle than the wool and I just held it over didn't protect it with anything and I just steamed it now I let that kind of dry and once it dried I gave this a haircut really close as you can see I hope you can see yeah there I think you can see I got really close to the button band and that just feels that feels like I sewed it it's very sturdy and fine okay so there's the button band and then on the other side exactly the same right side facing and I picked up the button band okay this is the buttonholes now you must calculate your buttonholes um, so I firstly 
I picked up my stitches. That's the first thing you're going to do before you do the maths for count, count, uh, uh, calculating your, your buttonholes. Now, because of the size of my buttons, this size, which I think is a really, I don't really know what size these are, but I'm going to say they are, they're small. So I wanted to do a one hole uh, buttonhole. And you'll have your favorite buttonhole method, but this is mine. And what I did was I didn't worry about what I, you know, I, I had 78 stitches over here and I tried to get that over here as well. So I picked up the 78 stitches. And what I did was when you do 78 stitches, you've got to take away, because I do a... Uh, yarn over, knit two together, buttonhole. That's my buttonhole of choice when it's a one stitch buttonhole. You've got to subtract that from 78. So I had 68. And then, uh, you know, you've got to do that math to calculate how many stitches are in between. Well, anyway, I did the math and I needed six stitches at the top the buttonhole, six stitches, the buttonhole, six stitches, and so on. Now, I'm going to tell you where to go to get that algorithm. You're going to go to 10 can knits. And she draws it out. I drew it. I did the, you know, it's basically algebra. But you can use that algorithm on 10 can knits blog for any buttonholes that you need. So you always start with your number of stitches. You're going to decide if you want a one-stitch buttonhole, a five-stitch buttonhole. That algorithm works every time. So pop yourself right over to 10 Can Knits or put in um, buttonhole uh, spacing. Yeah, buttonhole spacing 10 Can Knits into Google and you'll get right there. I use it every time and it works perfectly. Now what I did was I actually calculated, I had miscounted the number of my buttons. I thought I had 11 um, and I actually only had 10 so I'm awaiting with my friend's help to get one more button. So I actually have 11 buttons on my cardigan um, but the algorithm worked perfectly. So I, I did pick up my stitches, I did a knit one, purl one, or a foundation row. I did knit one, purl one, knit, and so on. And I wanted kind of a, I, I just kept, you know, checking over on the button band. And I just kept checking and making sure that it laid nicely. And I wanted a wide edging. So I just kept doing that until it satisfied me. And then I made the buttonholes. So I wanted a little bit of space in between the cardigan and the buttonhole, and you'll you'll see that visually. And I just uh, and then I made the buttonhole row, one stitch buttonhole, and then I did another foundation row row after the buttonhole, and another foundation row after that, and then I cast off. So then it was merely to lay this on uh yeah how did i do it i laid it on top and right where the buttonhole was i stuck a pin like that and i lifted it off and i sewed the button on and then i buttoned the button now i'm doing this flat on the table you know what i'm doing and then i laid it down again I buttoned the button because you want to make sure that everything is secure. I put a pin, I lifted it off, and I sewed the button and so on down. Now, after I did the buttons, I went inside and I folded over my ribbon just there and I laid my ribbon down. And because you don't want it too tight, you want it to be quite loose. I made sure there was no pull or no give and also that I could not see it on the inside and I laid it down. Now this was the part where I needed to ask questions and I have not done this correctly. So here's an area where I have learned and next time we'll, uh, I actually haven't had the opportunity to use ribbon. Um, I, the people that I know that have taught me, ribbon was not that common 
and um, the ribbons that are available to me are for the more traditional Norwegian kofta so I've just never used it before but I was very fortunate that my friend sent me this gorgeous French ribbon uh, Christine sent this to me and I mean it could not be more perfect I uh, you know just made sure that I uh, did it over now if I had to do this again I would before I sewed on my buttons I learned this actually from a friend on Instagram I would secure my button uh, I mean my ribbon and I would make sure that it was really uh, secure and I would sew my buttons right through that ribbon and I'm actually going to do that I haven't done it yet because I wanted to share with you my mistake I wanted you to see my mistake and how I was also learning so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna secure those buttons right through that ribbon for the you know just to stabilize that uh, button band and the buttons and the ribbon itself on this side I can't I can't really give a technique because all of my research says that you lay the ribbon on top and then you do the the buttonhole with the sewing machine and I'm not going to do that so for me um, if you have buttonhole experience you could have laid this uh, ribbon on your band and then gone and made your buttonholes right through the ribbon but I can't I don't know how to make buttonholes so um, what I did was I just got it as close to the buttonhole as I possibly could to cover that raw edge and then I made sure that I could not see it and then I buttoned my buttons. Uh, unfortunately the storage uh, on my telephone uh, stopped the recording of the end of my video so I came up to edit and upload the video um, ready to share uh, came in and found out that the end of it had not recorded so I am just popping in again to tell you that um, after I was finished sharing uh, information about the yeah the knitting of the button band and all of that the final finishing of this cardigan of course was the grafting of the underarms and I just wanted to share that um, when I went to uh, graft uh, I hope the lighting isn't too bad now because now I'm in uh, my office space uh, at my desk and uh, this is where I yeah, do all of my editing and uh, yeah, writing and uh, sometimes knitting and planning projects. But anyway, I, if you remember we were talking about that on the sleeve you have placed 10 stitches on hold and then also on the cardigan you have placed 10 stitches on hold and I simply just got two double pointed needles um, uh, and put those stitch those live stitches on the double pointed needles but one the tip that I wanted to tell you was that I did graft them together using the Kitchener stitch but what I did was is I used a double I doubled the uh, the yarn when I did the Kitchener stitch because that just gave me a really much more secure uh, thread or yeah yarn to do the Kitchener stitch with. So I doubled this up and then I just did the basic Kitchener stitch. Now, when you're going to do the Kitchener stitch, you're you're always you've got your thread at the back, and just to secure that Kitchener stitch, you've got that yarn at the back. The double pointed needles are like this, and I always start in this side of the back, and then I came to the front and I went in at the first stitch as if to knit, and then I went to that back DPN to that first stitch as if to purl and then I started the motion of the Kitchener stitch and I usually do that um, go in as to knit go back as to purl and then start the rhythm or the the rhyme 
of the Kitchener stitch, which is to go in to knit, slip that stitch off, and then purl. And then you go to the back, purl, slip that stitch off, and then knit. And then you just repeat that pattern all the time. But I used a double strand of the Pluto Lopi. I grafted the underarms uh, with the Kitchener stitch. And one of the tips uh, about grafting the arms, which I'm glad, really glad I'm at my desk now because I can show you, is that you want to just keep your double pointed needles as closely as you can together so there's not a lot of space in between them. And I just held them. Uh, in my left hand because I'm right-handed I held them in my left hand and I just made sure I kept them close together and that way when I was tugging on the double stranded Plutolope I was ensured that it didn't break so just keeping your DPNs close together while you're grafting and doing that Kitchener stitch motion uh, I didn't have any problems again uh, Kitchener stitching and grafting under the arms you just want to make sure that you do that when you're not stressed or you've got something to rush off to do I just waited and did my um, grafting when I had plenty of time uh, to do it and then uh, I just needed to simply uh, still with a double strand I just simply made sure that both gaps uh, uh, normally I can pick up some stitches here as if I was knitting a sock on each side but I didn't do that with this because I used Plutolope and then I just sewed uh, up those two there were just a slight um, hole there that you get because of joining the sleeves and I just sewed up those holes with the double strand of Plutolope and when I'm feeling it now it's it's you know I think it's a very smooth grafting I don't even know if you can see it because the lighting is not going to be uh, so good. Let me see if I can shine some some light on it. But I think my grafting was very smooth and very tidy uh, using this technique. And also I don't have any holes on each side of the sleeve. So uh, really after I grafted under the arms, I, I'm pretty... Yeah, I feel like the sweater, the techniques, and the finishing are complete. Now, I saw that I have a little, I've forgotten to um, uh, sew in this end on my sleeve. I noticed I've missed one of those. And when I did, uh, you can see on my sleeve how fragile that where that cast on was and one of the tips of course that you, uh, with Plutolope that I shared in an earlier vlog is that when you uh, do your cast on with the body or the sleeves you should go right away and sew in those ends you know once you've got your edging you want to go ahead and sew your ends in because see I've forgotten one and it gets quite fragile so now what I'll do is I'll just use that double strand of Plutolope Plutolope. Anytime I'll have any issues with this cardigan, I'll just use that double strand of Plutolope and I'll go back and I'll reinforce uh, where I cast it on. And that's really all of the techniques I've really tried to look over um, to see again it just it's very drapey it's very it's a very lightweight cardigan it's you know I feel like I'll be able to wear this in spring summer and winter you get the warmth but you get such a light and uh, yeah delicate fabric now, I realize that this isn't going to be a cardigan that I'm going to wear going hiking or, yeah, working out in the garden because it is quite fragile. It's quite fragile and I want to take good care of it. And then when I, I noticed when I wore it that you I got some kind of, uh, because it is so delicate, I got some kind of ridges and I'll just steam. I'll just take care of it by steaming it uh, along the way. So, also, uh, the bit that did not get recorded is, of course, the giveaway that Claire from the Woolly Thistle has so generously offered to those of you that have uh, participated in watching this video. 
on Instagram, you will go to my profile and you will see there's a link there for my knitography project page. Um, and when you go to the uh, project page, you'll know you're on the right page because you'll see my knitography logo. And I will be putting a picture of uh, maybe so several pictures, I don't know, maybe two or three pictures of the process of knitting my rusty cardigan. Under that, I would like for you to um, share with me uh, yeah, some feedback about this video. If you learned a technique or um, if you have a technique to share with me, and within your comment, you must have the word Plutolopi. You can put it anywhere in the comment. Uh, as long as you have the word Plutolopi and you share with me uh, something about some feedback about the video or about um, a new tip that you might share with me, uh, you'll be entered in a giveaway uh, from the Woolly Thistle. So I hope you'll go over to my project page and you will join in the giveaway. Um, I hope, please don't enter the giveaway until you see the pictures uh, of the cardigan on my project page. I will try to get that done right away uh, when uploading the video, um, but I will announce it on Instagram. Most everything I do uh, with Knitography and my uh, YouTube channel is connected to Instagram, so you can find uh, that information there as we go along. Please, when you're commenting on my project page to enter the giveaway, would you please tell me your Instagram name? Um, you have to sign in uh, with your name and possibly your email, but within the comment, would you please tell me your Instagram name because I really would like to connect with you on Instagram. I'd also like to ask that if you are knitting the um, rusty cardigan or if you get your wool from Claire or if you finish your cardigan, would you please tag me in your picture so that I can um, join in celebrating the completion of your project or the beginning of your project. Or you can also tag me if you've got a question or yeah, if you need support, I hope you'll tag me. Thank you friends for sharing the knitting journey of the Rusty Cardigan and that you'll join in the giveaway. Have a wonderful day when this video finds you.